God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And I am bringing a word to all of my brothers in Christ in America who have been taken captive. And many of us, we don't even know that we are literally in bondage. We have fallen away from God's will for us to be vigilant, to be sober, to be whole, to be holy. Um, all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But some of my brothers, God is saying to tell you that the reason why you cannot stop sinning, you cannot stop lusting, you cannot stop uh, uh, whoremongering. Some of you have wives, you have fallen into homosexuality, you have wives at home. Some of you are pastors, you're preachers, you have secret lovers, uh, and some of them are the same sex uh, lovers. God said, because we have taken lightly that there are some things that if you're not careful, it violates the rules of engagement because we are all soldiers in the army of the Lord. And when the watchmen come down off the wall, they are crying aloud and they don't spare anything. They're blowing trumpets. Where are the real prophets of God, the messengers of God, not the fake ones that we've seen in the last couple of decades. We're not talking about them. We're talking about men and women who have spent time with Jesus and in all thy getting, we've been getting understanding. And because God said, many of us, we don't understand the power of suggestion. We don't understand my friend that when you are consume with the outer court, with your appearance, with uh, pretense and putting on airs. We have an epidemic of men. I went to a church two Sundays ago to visit with the sister in Christ. And the pastor had on tight blue jeans. You can see all his toolbox, if y'all know what I'm saying. They were skinny jeans low riders, and this has become an epidemic, tight jeans, muscle shirts, they'll roll the sleeves up so you can see their tattoos, got their guns showing, two earrings, one earring, this has all become commonplace with those who confess that they are soldiers followers of Jesus Christ. And God said, many of you have become captive because you take lightly. You say, but God knows my heart. And just like God told me to warn the women, he would challenge you, my friend, that many of us, we simply don't know what time it is. We don't know what time it is, friend. The hour is late and we don't know when Christ is soon to come. And God is saying, you say that God knows your heart, but like he said to the women, he does know it. It's dark. It's a dark heart and it's divided the world and God. And many of us, we are toting about all of Egypt's all of their treasures, all of their fashions. We're doing it. We're talking it. And we claim that we are men and women of God. Or as the Lord would say, many of you say that you are men of God, but God is saying to tell you that if you don't strip off your vanities, you're not going to make it. And what is happening, the Lord says, is that many of you, oh, my friend, the Lord says some have even gone so far, so far that you put on makeup just like the ladies. You, you spend more time doing you than your wife. Oh, my friend, you spend more time combing your hair, fixing your stuff up than your wife. And we wonder why, my friend, that there is so much 
homosexuality that has invaded the church is because vanity, vanity, we as a people, as a confessing nation, the largest Christian confessing nation in the world, we're spending all our time in the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm the finest brother. That's what you saying of them all. And because my friend, when you in particular wear your skinny jeans, you the pastor of this church. Now you got an earring in this ear. You got a hoop earring in this ear. What happens, my friend, the spirit of vanity, it begins to deal with your deep parts. And this is what drags you out into darkness because it's not really about Jesus. It's not about his shed blood. It's not about holiness. It's not about warning the brethren. And God is saying that many pastors, that the reason he sent forth women to even talk to our brothers is because many of you no longer have any backbone. And the prophet Joel saw that in the latter days, God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your men, your boys, your daughters, we would prophesy. Why? Because he knew he was going to have what's going on right now. The men, we, we got Pentecostal playboys. Oh yeah. We got Pentecostal playboys all up in the churches, just vain. And they will explain away, try to attempt to, that God knows their heart. Oh, my friend, that's why he's sending this word to you, that if the men do not strip off this vanity, you are forcing God's hand, my friend, because you are a partaker of darkness. You are a partaker. James tells us that God resists the proud. He keeps them afar away from him. He doesn't like pride. And once we put on, or you brothers put on those skinny jeans, you put those earrings in your ear, you feel you. You feeling you. And you take lightly, my friend. You got a mouse in your house. It's called vanity. And it's eating away at your confession for Jesus Christ because you have removed him from his lordship over your life. And it's all about you. So the Lord says to tell you that this is why many have gone back into sexual affairs. You can't stop. Some of you are secretly homosexual. You're bisexual. I, I remember I had prayed for a brother in Christ. He was trying to come out of homosexuality. And he, he was fed up. He had been through all types of physical abuse, psychological abuse. His physical body was tattered. He has so much going on because that's a dark world, my friend. Oh, that, that world of homosexuality, that's a dark world. But there is room at the cross for the homosexual. And what happens, friend, when you take lightly that you are actually walking in vanity, you start filling up your closet again with them skeletons. Because now you sleeping with your wife and a man and a woman, the spirit of uh, homosexuality and lust has taken you captive because you think it's no big deal when you put that muscle shirt on, you flexing your abs, you got your buttocks all tight and you got it just right in them tight blue jeans, no different than the sisters that the Lord said to tell us about how we're being, uh, we're being played for the fool, but God saying to tell the men, help want it. God say, I want you to come back and consecrate yourself. I want you to come back so that I can give you some power to overcome your addictions. Because many of us, we smoking, we drinking, we turning it up. We don't went back into the world and we can't break free. God said, because you have to take off your vanity. You got to strip. Don't let nobody trick you. My friend, what you wear affects you. 
when you are adorned in all of your, look, you got men who got just as much bling as the women. Bling, blah, bling. These are men. God say, I'm looking for you. I want to restore you, but I got to get you to understand that you got to strip off vanity. When I prayed for the young man that came up for prayer, he was broken. He had been in and out of relationships with men. He was like a kept man, like a woman is kept. This brother had been kept and he was done. He did not want to go to hell. He knew God has given him grace. The Holy Spirit told me to tell this brother because when he stepped up into the line, he had the earring in. The Lord said to tell him to take it off, that I couldn't pray for him. I could not uh, 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 agree with him with what he shared until he took off the earring. Because why? My friend, it's a point of vanity. It's your vanity, brother. You can't tell me that when you put your earring on and you got your stuff on, you look, look, you like the females. Look, you just perfumed down, got your cologne on, smelling all good, got your tight booty jeans on. Come on. You know what I'm saying to you, brothers. You got your skinny jeans on. You done got into your sexy ride. God didn't tell you to buy that sports car. You went and bought that sports car. Now you got your sexy muscle car. You done put your sexy muscles in it. And now you done showed up. You cannot tell me when you get to church that you ain't feeling you. You is thinking everybody looking at you. I'm fine. You sitting there all stoic. You're the same ones, brother, that cannot even lift up holy hands because you're so enamored with who? You. So God is saying to tell the brothers, you got to strip it because God say, I want to restore you and I want to set your soul on fire for me. God said that David to tell the men to go look at the story of David, you'll find it in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 23, list 37 men. These were considered David's mighty men. These men were strong. They, they were like your modern day green berets and Navy SEALs. They were called to fight and protect Israel. These men and the king, they they were called to protect him. And God is saying to tell the men, I'm looking for some mighty men now who will strip, come all the way out of Egypt, my friend, come out, come out of there. Take all that vanity, burn it, throw it away. Get back into your quiet space and repent with God. He said, my blood still has power. It still reaches to the lowest valley. It'll come up to your high mountain. God said, I want to restore my men. I want to give you my power again. David had these 33 fighting men and three of these men were notorious. These men were just outstanding. God said, I'm looking for some spiritual snipers. I'm looking for some spiritual green berets. I'm looking for some Navy SEALs now to do some special ops. We got to say, come on, we got work to do. I need you to get out those clubs. I need you to burn up your black books. God say, I need you to get offline. I need you to decompress. I need you to come home. Don't keep making excuses, my friend. God say, tell you, I love you. I will restore you. He doesn't care where you've been, brother, how long you've been, who you've been doing, what you've been doing with. God say, come home. Get home. And God is saying to tell the pastors that that he is holding many of you responsible because you have not constrained them. You have not made any attempt to deal with the waywardness in your churches because like God's been saying, and I've been declaring this on all these videos, that many of you, you are doing nothing but chasing the money. You chasing those Benjamins. You are not preaching the cross. You are not preaching that blood. You are not preaching repentance. Listen, my friends, God is saying to the pastors, you need to repent because you will not constrain them. You are letting your brothers just fall into the wide road, just like Eli. The Bible tells us in first Samuel chapter two, he was the high priest 
and he would not constrain his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And God's judgment came on him. The Bible says that Eli was a heavy man. He fell backwards and broke his neck. God said many of our uh, modern day bishops and fake apostles and false prophets and corrupt preachers have all fallen over backwards. They are disconnected at the neck from the head, which is the Christ. Jesus is saying to tell you, brother, come home, come home, get home. He does not want to judge you. Get home, strip, take that vanity off. God is saying that some of you, you are all tied up chasing the women. God is saying, I want you to understand it's heaven or hell. You decide, my friend. God is saying, last but not least in this quick exhortation, is your name written in the book? Because if your name is not written, my friend, you're not going to make it. After you finish all that philandering and all that cheating on your wives and all you pastors that's having these secret affairs because you're walking in, in vanity, God said to tell some of you, you need to send that fast car back. You need to take your man purse off. You need to take your makeup off. Take those earrings off. God said, take it all off because it's ushering your spirit. The Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. Oh, my friend, and when you understand what you put on this body, oh, it will affect you psychologically. God is saying the spirit of masturbation has taken over multitudes, masses of you. Because why? You keep violating the, the simple practice of modest apparel, just like the women. God said, I don't want to because some of you are teety tottering. He doesn't want to blot out your name. Some of you, you know better. Come home. Is your name written in the book? My friend, I love you. Till next time. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, we will reap. God saying, be ready. When the angel of death comes, you will answer his call. I love you, my friend. Till next time.